Welcome to The Money Hour with host Tina Mitchell and co-host Keelan Harvey. Tina Mitchell, MLO 145420, and Keelan Harvey, MLO 133075, are licensed loan originators with Gateway Mortgage Group, LLC, and MLS 7233. The views expressed by the speakers on the following program are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of Gateway Mortgage Group, LLC, nor are they necessarily endorsed by Gateway Mortgage Group, LLC. Now, in the studio, local mortgage experts, Tina Mitchell and Keelan Harvey. Welcome to the Money Hour, 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, September 22nd show. I am your host, Tina Mitchell. And co-host, Keelan Harvey. You're a local mortgage expert bringing in advice and inside knowledge on today's events in our local economy and how it can affect your money. If you're hearing our show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast, but we're here to answer your questions and connect you with the amazing guests that we have on the show today. Please call the show at 1-855-411-50. Again, that's 1-855-411-50 or online at themoneyhour.com. And our guest for today's show, Joseph Kidworth with K-Law Kidworth Group and Associates. It's all about credit repair. If you're looking at increasing your credit score so you can get that job that you want, if you're looking at buying a home or renting an apartment, you're having challenges because of your credit, or you just want to improve your credit score, that's what today's entire show is going to be all about. Great information and great guests in studio. For more information on any topic discussed, please call the show at 1-855-411-50. Again, that's 1-855-411-50 or online at themoneyr.com. And let's start out today's show with a little money chat. Money. Money. What is happening in the Seattle real estate market and the slowdown? Seattle has been arguably one of the hottest housing markets in America with home prices rising annually by double digits fueled by huge demand. There is, however, one outside force that is starting to throw a slowdown on the Seattle market, and that's our Chinese buyers. The Pacific Northwest City has been one of the greatest beneficiaries of the recent wave of Chinese buyers in the U.S. real estate. Both Chinese investors and families hoping to send their kids to America universities have fueled demand for housing in Seattle, which has long enjoyed a strong Asian culture. Now, in just the last two years, the demand increased dramatically in 2016 near uh, nearby Canada City, Vancouver had a 25% tax on international home buyers in effort to cool its own heating house market. Chinese investors who have been strong in the market simply moved south of the border to escape the tax and came right over here to our Seattle market. Now also the Chinese one one recent fall in value against the U.S. dollar has made housing more expensive for Chinese buyers. The decline in the currency is not the only problem, but the increasing restrictions on getting money out of China is a bigger issue. Adding to that, the trade war between the U.S. and China is slowing things down. Now, Chinese families looking to buy homes for their children in this area have dried up significantly in the past six to ten months. Seattle ha- housing has been cooling because of that. The number of homes for sale in King County, where Seattle resides, Uh, shot up 47% in May compared to one year ago, according to the Northwest Multiple Listing Service. Pending home sales, which represent signed contracts, dropped 9%. Despite the increase in the supply of Seattle homes for sale, inventory is still incredibly low, and the increase in inventory means that we are getting into a more balanced market. This is actually great news for everyone. A balanced market is what we all want because it's sustainable. So the Seattle housing market has benefited extremely from region's largest employer, Amazon. While there was concern earlier in the year that the local head tax on employers would cause a hiring slowdown, the tax was quickly repealed after enormous pressure from Amazon. Now, the e-commerce giant, giant, however, did report its first decline in its numbers of employees since 2009. After strong hiring throughout the first half of 2017, job postings for open positions at Amazon headquarters dropped shortly last December. December, according to the report from the Seattle Times. Now, Amazon is also planning to open a second headquarters, commonly called HQ2. Although it has yet announced the location, it currently employs more than 40,000 workers at its Seattle headquarters, according to the quarterly filings. 
Hiring shifts in Amazon in the housing market would certainly have an impact in our local housing market, but the Seattle area has many strong companies stationed here, Microsoft, Expedia, Zillow, AT&T, and T-Mobile, just list a few. On top of this, we have many companies that have satellite offices in Seattle, like Apple, eBay, Facebook, GoDaddy, Uber, Uber, YouTube is just a list of very few of them. So our employment is strong and will continue to be here, be so in the Seattle market. So I don't think that we're at risk of uh, a a major drop in the real estate market. We're definitely going to see an adjustment in the market. Again, bringing us more to a balanced market is going to be good for our economy and good for buyers and for sellers. So coming up next in the money hour, credit repair. Again, if you're trying to get a job and you think your credit score might prevent you from getting that employment position, stay tuned. We have Joseph Kidworth with K-Law Kidworth Group and Associates right here at 1150 AM KKNW after the short break. When it comes to making a next level lifestyle move, who you choose to work with matters. Whether your goal is downsizing to an amenity rich urban condo or upsizing to a more distinct Northwest home or acreage, you need expert and strategic guidance to lead you there. Amanda Wright, a certified negotiation expert, accredited staging professional, and realtor with Coldwell Banker Bain has developed a proven strategy to help people just like you achieve your home ownership dreams with less stress and more care. Hi, this is Amanda Wright. If you need a skilled and experienced realtor to help you achieve your lifestyle goals, let's chat. Call me at 206-715-0983. That's 206-715-0983. Do you find yourself constantly frustrated with finances? Do you even know the data behind your dreams? Would you like to experience financial joy? Marcel Allen with Dreamosity supports remarkable leaders to navigate and win on social media. Marcel motivates her clients to leverage video with confidence. Marcel has helped clients get their first 100 fans and their first 100,000 fans. She's been in the digital marketing game for 10 years and can help you stay remarkable online. Marcel and Dreamosity can help you experience financial joy. Hi, this is Marcel with Dreamosity. I want to help you discover what financial joy looks like. Visit dreamosity.com to learn more. D-R-E-A-M-O-S-I-T-Y or text 360-420-9966. You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, and co-host, Keelan Harvey, on Alternative Talk AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage experts, Tina Mitchell and Keelan Harvey. Welcome back to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell. And co-host, Keelan Harvey. You're a local mortgage experts right here on 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, September 22nd show. It is a great day to talk money, and that's what the show is all about how to make money, save money, and build a better quality of life for you and your family. If you're hearing our show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast, but we're here to answer you in any questions or connect you with the guests that we have on the show today. Please call the show at 1-855-411-50. Again, that's 1-855-411-50 or online at themoneyr.com. In studio right now, and we'll be here for the rest of the show with us, is Joseph Kidworth with K-Law, Kidworth Group and Associates. And we're talking with Joseph today all about credit repair. Joseph, thank you. First time in studio with us. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited. Wonderful. (laughs) And and I love the weather as well. I know. It's beautiful (laughs) in Seattle. Some days, some days, yes. Some days, not. Cloudy and rainy. That's (laughs) lovely. (laughs) My understanding is you had a vacation uh, a few days back. I Um, did. Just got back from Key West. That's fantastic. I know. I'm rocking a little bit of sunshine. Welcome back home. And thank Thank you for having me on your radio station. So I'm here to answer every single question you got for me this evening. Is it evening? Oh, yeah. In Seattle, it's actually afternoon. (laughs) But because it's cloudy, look, evening. Yeah. (laughs) Exactly. So uh, go ahead, you guys, and uh, um, let's let's get this in the roll and let's make this happen. Sounds good, Joseph. And before we do that, a little bit about Joseph. Joseph has been a renowned in the financial credit industry since the late 1990s. He is first noted as a young financial advisor for a large worldwide insurance company, but over time has become known as a fine expert on the finance credit industry by fans and critics alike. 
uh, throughout his years of understanding the finance credit industry allowed him to collaborate with large banks and mortgage companies nationwide to restore and bring credit education to the consumer. At the present time and since 2007, Joseph Kitworth has helped consumers to understand federal laws and state laws in regards of legal credit auditing as well as educating them on how to maintain a healthy financial lifestyle. Joseph is focused on providing legal credit auditing to the consumer against any credit agencies, creditors, collection agencies, and any company that do report on consumer credit reports with emphasis on forensic consumer rights and protection. Uh, Joseph is knowledgeable in both federal and state laws to help rehab your credit rating. I'm pretty excited, Joseph. I've heard a lot of credit repair people kind of, and you guys take it to a whole different level, which is pretty exciting. I didn't realize how in-depth and how many strategies you can have. Let's say um, I want to I want to get my credit score up. Where do we start? Uh, well, um, let's begin with um, secure credit cards. Uh, for the most part, uh, um, you know, guys and girls that go to college, uh, they want they might want to start credit. The best way to do it is just to get a secure credit card. Um, for the most part, people tell them, hey, go ahead and apply for many, many credit cards and see who approves you. That's the wrong way. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. sound like a good idea. Horrible path. You want to crash and burn? That's how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, a second one uh, uh, option is to ask mom and dad uh, to add you as an uh, authorized user on the credit mm-hmm. cards. Mm-hmm. That will uh, uh, ensure that the credit history will be imported into your credit report. Then you start right with on the right foot yeah. with a solid credit from obviously from mom and dad that build the credit for many many years. Mm-hmm. So uh, a lot of credit bureaus do recognize authorized users, and you'll get to see all these uh, uh, reportings and scores going up on your credit report. That's- and talking about the authorized users, uh, Joseph, because I didn't know this before we first had met, and you talked about there's actually a service that you can lease. Correct. Credit cards. Yes. For the purpose of being an authorized user. So talk a little bit about how that works. Um, Well, uh, in the United States, there are about 3% of people in the whole population of the United States that do have perfect credit. And we're talking about 780 and above. Mm -hmm. So these folks maintain their credit for many, many years. And then, well, as a result, they decided to provide uh, their credit history to the consumer for leasing mm-hmm. purposes so they can go ahead and get ahead of the game. So that's something that we do provide. We have many, many folks that are willing to lease their accounts, their revolving yeah. accounts to the consumer in order to get them a head start. Yeah, I love that. So it's really a shout out for people that need that to utilize that if they don't have a parent that's willing to add them to their account. And by the way, if you do have a parent, they don't have to give you the credit card. They just need to add you to the account. And the longer the history of that, the better that's going to increase your score. And ideally, you want to have at least 24 months history on that count, correct, Joseph? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and so a call out for people that want to make a little bit extra money and they want to lease their amazing established credit history that they have, that might be an option uh, as well. And also you got to make sure that they have they paid on time, right? Because if it's good or bad credit history, then you obtain that regardless. Is that right, Joseph? That's true. And uh, But for the most part, all these guys, you know, they have perfect credit. So yeah. their credit is just... Uh, Otherwise, it, they're not invited in, right? Uh, No. (laughs) And here's what I tell everybody. There are two numbers that you really have to guard with your life. Uh Mm -hmm. Your social security number Mm. and your credit score. Yes. So these guys, that's exactly what they do. That's why they have perfect credit. And they're willing to open their books for those who are willing to pay the fee uh, to use their credit history. Yeah. yeah, so let's talk perfect credit because I've never seen somebody with a perfect credit score. Now, the perfect credit score is different from the three bureaus, right? They uh, range from, or am I wrong? They, they all range, all three of them. Yeah, uh, but then the, the highest per- being 840, right? 850. Oh, 850. Yeah, I've the, never seen anyone barely over 800. So really, you can't I get a, one. No way. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So that's uh, a whole. That's a whole other show on figuring that algorithm out. <laughs> yeah, and I was referring to friends and family, that kind of thing, on their credit, right? If you have a your brother who's got great credit, you know, just ask your brother, hey. If I get an authorized user, you pay that thing on time, right? right? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Mom and dad, are you paying that on time, mm-hmm. right? Exactly. You so, make sure that they pay on time. Otherwise, yeah. it's going to affect your credit as well. And the other thing on that, too, is if you are doing a family side of it, you have to coach them because keeping in mind for them, they 
have a lot of great established credit, I'm assuming. So if they have one credit card that reaches over a maximum ratio, ideally you want to keep your debt, your, your debt ratio or available credit limit versus what you're using at 30%, never go over 50%. 25%. Right? They take so that 20, back. They took it down now. They so 25%. Changed the rules. They changed the rules uh, in 2009. Okay. So that's good wow. to know. Thank you, Joseph. So if you do or you're using one from a parent, it, coaching them to let them know, please do not, even though you use that credit card all month to put put all your bills on and then you pay it off every month, please make sure not to go over that 25% of what's available to you because mm-hmm. that's the only authorized account that this challenge credit borrower correct. has. And if it goes over 25%, now they've just defeated that whole purpose. Correct, correct. Joseph? Correct. Yeah. Yes. But, and, but to answer your question, yeah, authorized user or secure credit cards, that's the best way to start credit. Uh, from the beginning or rebuilding credit. Yeah. So two different things. Somebody Love that it. got you know hurt prior to you know the economy and then trying to recover, then do the same as our uh, formula. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Joseph, we were chatting and you said, isn't there a, it's got, they have to have a credit card for a couple of years or something of that nature. If you're going to get an authorized user on a family's card or they should have a history of, was it over a year, did you say? Um, go ahead and elaborate a little more on that question because that's a very really broad question that I can I can take it so many different directions. So let's say uh, I get on mom and dad's credit card. They've only had that credit card for a year. Right. That doesn't necessarily help you. Is that correct? They need to have a history there, right? Is there a, well, is there a time frame? Or? They, they could have uh, uh, anyone as in uh, utilize anyone's uh, accounts, mm-hmm. right? No matter the length. However, when it comes to approvals, as you guys do mortgages, an underwriter are looking for what, a minimum of 12 months, 12 months yeah. 36 months in some cases. Mm-hmm. So obviously, the longer the credit history, the better it is for, uh, for those who want to establish or rebuild their credit by utilizing uh, authorized user accounts. Okay. So. Yeah. And then, Joseph, um, the investment uh, that you're going to make for credit repair services, What I know that there's a different range that you're looking at. Can you share that with our listeners? Yeah, absolutely. Um, number one is in order to determine the cause involved to get some of these cases um, uh, fixed, mm-hmm. uh, we need to do an analysis on their credit report. Not only an analysis on the credit report of the finances, why? Mm-hmm. Because we just want to match them with the right, you know, with the right product. You sure. know, we, we have a service and we have on our services, we, we have different things that we can do for the consumer. But in order to determine whether or not something's going to work out for the consumer, we must do an analysis. Then we can determine, OK, here's the cost involved. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, the good thing about our firm is we work with everybody. So uh, from... You know, the little guy who's making minimum wage, the guy's making a hundred million dollars a year. Yeah. So um, obviously, uh, the flexibility is out there. So as long as we we can detect that the person is enthusiastic and they mm-hmm. really want to change their ways, how they look at credit and finances, and, and, and want to buy a house, then obviously we can make some adjustments on the cost involved. Yeah, and so on. Let's talk about the difference between because you have a a, a credit repair company that has a small monthly um, fee that they're paying, and I don't want to say anything against um, uh, those types of companies because there it, it is a really a low cost investment, Correct. and that might be something that somebody needs to have a temporary mm-hmm. fix. And then you have a company like yourself that you might pay more. Maybe an average for the total cost would be. I know it's hard to say because there's so many different things, but we just say an average, maybe a grand. An average. Let's say on an average and a grand. So, but tell the difference in why that the higher investment that you're making is going to have such a bigger impact overall. Correct. Uh, number one, uh, paying a small fees, whether it's ninety nine dollars a month or sixty dollars a month. Uh, through a companies out there who provide uh, uh, similar services, mm-hmm. all they are doing for you is just targeting the credit bureaus. They just write generic letters and they do online disputings. Mm-hmm. That's something the consumer could do for free. So all you have to do is just go to Google.com and just mm-hmm. put some of those letters and do it yourself. Mm-hmm. But the consumer just much rather pay a small fee to have these companies represent them. Which I would. I would pay a small fee, small fee all day long before I would ever do that right. myself. I would not want to waste my time with that. But, but here's the problem. Yes, I understand. There's a big problem uh-huh. because um, 
when we look in a credit report, we're looking at many different factors, mm -hmm. not only just the credit bureaus, but also the creditors and collection companies and tax liens and so forth. So by a company just disputing information against the credit bureaus, that's not going to ensure the information is going to go away from a collection company, from a mm -hmm. creditor, from a tax lien, even from the IRS. Yeah. So it, it always, it's always going to be there. Yeah, you're paying $59 a month, but that's not going to help you. It might help you probably in a short term, mm -hmm. but in the long term, I guarantee you those accounts will come right back at your credit yeah. within nine months. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, paying a larger fee will allow you to protect yourself from A to Z. We're going to go ahead and contact the legal uh, legal department for collection companies, legal department for the creditors. We contact the IRS if there's a lien. Mm -hmm. We contact the state of Washington if there's a lien. If there's a bankruptcy, we, we contact the bankruptcy court as well. So obviously we require a little bit more yeah. funds just to pay for the cost, but at the end of the day, it's a permanent. So condition. like anything else, there's good in both companies. Mm -hmm. When you, you know, you can shop for your clothes at TJ Maxx, Correct. Mm -hmm. or you can shop for your clothes at Nordstrom, and you know the quality that you're going to get at Nordstrom is going to be more than a TJ Maxx. Same thing with the credit repair is, you know, I mean, you're really, you're paying for a more quality, longer term fix versus if you just want to do something temporarily to get through that home loan that you're trying to get. So it makes total sense. Right. You know, I, and you can cap out too, right? I, I used one of those companies back in the day and my score got to like a certain level and then it just, it, I couldn't do anything else, right? You just kind of level out and you plateau and then you need to kind of step it up for that next level. That's you guys, right? That next level. Yeah, of course. Um, because when you hit that plateau you just mentioned and then yeah. you need the, the professional, okay, what do I do next? I just hit the plateau, and then I'd done everything that they told me to do. What do I need to do next? Then mm -hmm. you come to us, and we just give you a complete scale of what you need to do right in order to get over that. So, And it's not complicated. Like the 700s to the 780s to go from good credit to just perfect credit. I mean, yeah, absolutely. You guys, you guys do a lot of that. There are many, many different, no secrets, there are just many different hidden little things yeah. that you can find uh, online, if you will, uh, but then obviously we have the opportunity to pull a majority of those and we like to share those with the consumers so they don't have to feel like, oh, wow, this is top secret and how much I have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Not really. Yeah. Just come and ask. Yeah. You know. And you do uh, complimentary audits or review of it. So Correct. if you know a, a call to action, if you're listening right now and you want to get that perfect credit score, because I know a lot of people that have a great credit score, but they want a perfect one. If you want to get up there, um, it's not just for challenge credit, but it's ones to increase as well. Or if you do have challenge credit and you really want to improve that, call the show at one 855 or go online at themoneyhour.com so we can get you connected with Joseph. Coming up next on The Money Hour, we're going to continue our conversation about credit repair. Joseph Kidworth with with K-Law, Kidworth Group and Associates right here on 1150 AM KKNW after this short break. Are you frustrated in this challenging market of multiple offers? You're not alone, but having the right agent and the right strategy can stop the madness. Susan Ward with Windermere Real Estate East has assisted many individuals and families in the same position get into homes they love. Susan is a full-time realtor and has been practicing real estate for six years. Hi, this is Susan Ward. I'm with Windermere Real Estate East, Yarrow Bay office. To learn more about my strategies to get you into your new home, or if you're selling, sell for top dollar, please call me at 425-999-7721. That's 425-999. 999-7721 and I look forward to talking to you. Does the Seattle area real estate market scare you as a buyer? Are you looking to sell your home but not sure how to maximize your home's potential? You need an industry veteran with years of experience at your side to guide you from start to finish and help you achieve your goals. Michael Pollock with Northwest Premier Brokers is the resource that many Seattle area buyers and sellers have utilized to make their real estate dreams happen in this unique and challenging market. Hi, this is Michael Pollock. I welcome the opportunity to meet with you and learn about your real estate needs and discuss how Northwest Premier Brokers can assist you in accomplishing all of your goals. Visit me at seattleareareallestateteam.com or call me direct at 206-399-1345 today. You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, and co-host, Keelan Harvey, on Alternative Talk AM 1150. 
Now, back to the show with local mortgage experts, Tina Mitchell and Keelan Harvey. Welcome back to the Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell. And co-host, Keelan Harvey. Your local mortgage experts right here on 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, September 22nd show. We are here to help you build a strong financial blueprint one week and one show at a time. If you're hearing our show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast, but we're here to answer any questions or connect you with the guests that we have on the show today. Please call the show at 1-855-411-50. Again, that's 1-855-411-50 or online at themoneyhour.com. In studio right now, our continued conversation with Joseph Kidworth with K-Law, Kidworth Group and Associates, all about credit repair. So, Joseph, something we haven't talked about, um, which I really liked about your services, you have a bunch of lawyers on retainer, like, and at the end of the day, you're saying if, if they're not providing you the adequate documents, packets, where a lot of companies give up, you guys are like, nope, let's go to court, let's do this, right? which is probably that, like, nail in the coffin where they're like, oh, just kidding, we don't have everything that we, you know, because they're trying to get their money too, right? Correct, correct. And, uh, and just to... Uh, uh, um, mentioned something fascinating that happened many years back. Um, um, a, a lady got awarded $18.6 million mm-hmm. lawsuit against Equifax. Yeah, and I think I read about that. Yeah, in fact, yeah. it is on my it's website. A lot of money. Yeah. I had the video out there explaining what really happened. So, uh, yeah, so what we technically do, once the bureaus uh, continuously reporting this information without verifying accordingly, then mm-hmm. we'll go ahead and get the big guns out. Yeah. We yeah. get the AK 47s. Is that bring it on? <laughs> and to, to clarify for somebody that doesn't understand how this process works, majority of people do not. Um, credit repair is not about fixing um, issues that you, it's not about fixing a late that you did not have as much as as you have the late, but the way it's getting reported, the coding and the numbers that are reflected on the credit report and all this stuff that nobody would understand except for somebody like Joseph, that is because it's being issued to you in the impro- the wrong way. Correct. That's how they're getting removed and deleted. Correct, Joseph? Correct. So, and that's why we, when we talk to the consumer, we want them to see the big picture about credit. Mm-hmm. It's just not about, about fixing a few things and make it look great and needy, right? No. Mm-hmm. We want to make sure that every single company out there there who is providing this information to the consumer through a report, they have the proper records. Mm -hmm. If they do not have those records, they should not be reporting the account to begin with. It's a huge violation of federal laws. And from that point forward, we can take it to the legal action where we can file class uh, actions, uh, losses against any company, whether it's a credit bureau or a creditor, uh, collection companies and so forth. That's the big picture. We want to make sure that every company out there is maintaining records on myself, Mm -hmm. uh, my sister, brothers, mom and dad, grandpa, and so on and so on. If they not, they have to stop. Which and that's another benefit, and I'm glad you asked that uh, question, Keelan, because being you're, an you're attorney, welcome, having Tina. attorneys, <laughs> 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 having attorneys on on staff to do this, that letter is because you. Another thing that I earned was learned, which was really interesting. When we were talking with you, Joseph, is um, the 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 credit credit companies that are a smaller cost and just a monthly fee, the letters that they're sending really aren't any, on to any type of letterhead or anything, but no. this is actually coming from an, an attorney, and Correct. so that has some clout and some, okay, some wow, we better, it. yeah. Yes. When it comes to the losses We better so delete forth. this yeah. because we don't have what we need to have, and we know that they know what we need to. Now, it, yeah. And here's one more thing that everybody should pay attention to by hiring companies uh, that do not provide an A to C process. Mm-hmm. Um, they have the tendency to send out documents denying the information that shows up on the consumer credit report. That is lying. That's wow. flat lying. For instance, you might have a bankruptcy, and we all know you filed bankruptcy, mm-hmm. but what these companies do, they go ahead and send out a letter stating this bankruptcy is not mine. Well, that's bad news for the consumer because of now course. if you plan yeah, to a file point. a lawsuit against the bureaus, now you can because you fly lie to them. So yes. be careful with those things. And yeah. that's the part that people just Because that came from attention. a real story that you had with one of your clients. Yes. We, yes. And if you don't mind, I can share in 20 seconds. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, we had this client uh, who filed bankruptcy. And under the oath, I mentioned that, that when you do go under the oath, you're technically saying it is mine. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, we had a client that was lying to us. And we uh, worked on this case for over a year, year and a half. Mm-hmm. And then when we we started doing the depositions, 
uh, that's when the truth came out. She was lying to us. So, um, and what can you do? I mean, so be honest with your attorney. Exactly. Just be straightforward. <laughs> you know, because at the end of the day, when I pull your credit, it's going to tell me everything about your life. <laughs> <laughs> be honest with everybody. Exactly. Yes. Just be honest. Yeah. yeah. Do like, your really. best and forget the rest, but yeah. be honest. Be honest, <laughs> especially if you're in court. Yeah, on, London. In de- London's listening to this show. It's good to hear her dad say, be honest. <laughs> Well, mm-hmm. got to try to teach her the ways. Mm-hmm. Everybody, be honest, <laughs> especially London. <laughs> Joseph, let's uh, share some successes about items that you've had removed from credit reports. Uh, well, we had done all kinds of different things, uh, um, from tax liens from the IRS. Now, let me mention the amount of the IRS. If you do owe money to the IRS, but then mm-hmm. they report it in, uh, reporting the negative remark under the public records section, mm-hmm. uh, and we removed it from the uh, from this section. You still owe money to the IRS. Yeah, and you, you can gotta... call call the show to talk to our <laughs> call the show to talk to our tax guy because exactly. that's the other expert that we have that can help through that process. But yes, pay the IRS. Pay the IRS. Thank you, Justin. Or any tax liens. For instance, there's folks. For example, and you guys might see the on credit reports when you get to see Washington State tax lien. For the mm-hmm. most part, there could be two type of, uh, type of liens. One of them is unemployment. Somebody, mm-hmm. uh, you know, over-collected unemployment, right? So the state of Washington is going to come after you as a form of a tax lien on your credit report. Yeah. Or your property taxes. Mm-hmm. So we can handle those. That's not a problem through the legal process and trying to get those removed from your credit report as far as the uh, public record section uh, concern. The same with the IRS and bankruptcy and judgments. Makes sense. So, Joseph, is there anything that a credit repair expert like yourself cannot remove? Look, um, number one, it's not whether or not I cannot remove it. The only company that have the rights to remove information from uh-huh. a credit report are the credit bureaus. Yes. Mm-hmm. We will go ahead and open up an investigation and say, look, here's what we have on our consumer Go ahead and do your proper investigation. But for the most part, these credit agencies, they just don't do anything. So, But they are the only ones that can delete information from your credit report. Got it. Now, by us doing the inquiry and open up an investigation, that's going to give us a little bit more ground to understand whether or not these items should be removed. But okay. when you hear the word, hey, I guarantee we can remove it, run, Forrest. <laughs> because, because that, <laughs> that's a violation of federal laws. No one can guarantee you that. Yes. Uh, but we do guarantee our money back. In the event it doesn't work out, you get your money back. But quite frankly, our success ratio is about 75 to 80 percent. Okay. Uh, bankruptcies, I think I spoke to you guys a while back ago when mm-hmm. we had this guy who owns a small little bank mm-hmm. and he had like 15 foreclosures. We took care of those as mm-hmm. well as Chapter 13. Yeah, that's crazy. It was crazy. His scores went up like 180 points. Yeah. That medical bill thing was crazy too. Can you talk about that a little bit? I can't believe how much you guys got off of that. On the medical, yeah, one hundred forty-six thousand dollars medical Ooh. stuff. Be careful, guys, because uh, um, if you can't pay your medicals and a doctor release your information to a collection company for uh, for collection purposes, that itself is a violation of HIPAA law. Yes, yeah, that's yeah. crazy. HIPAA law protects your yes. identity. So, uh, and that's why we utilize every single law out there. Yeah. So that we can help the consumer. That's why you pay a little bit extra because we're just trying to tailor, you know, this case based on what your credit looked like. This is just, it's not generic. So, but yeah, medical bills, $146,000, all gone. Wow. I, I hope he took you to dinner or something. I mean, he must, he must love <laughs> you. Just a pat on the back. Good job. <laughs> Good job. <Yeah. laughs> I was like, you really, got to be kidding me, man. $146,000. Buy me a car. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Small house. Right. What about if I use you as an authorized Seattle, user? Though. I can yeah. use your credit now as an authorized user. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. So um, talk about the, if it's not done through the full process, let's use a collection uh, for an example mm-hmm. of what happens and why those things can pop back up on the credit report. Of course. Number one, when when you're paying, uh, whether it's $99 a month or $89 a month fee, uh, these companies, once again, will dispute information against the credit bureaus. Mm-hmm. Now, the credit bureaus will notify uh, a collection company or a creditor to let them know, look, 
we cannot verify this account, we no longer take the reporting. Yes. So in this case, what will happen is the collection company will go ahead and remove the item. Well, not the collection company, the credit bureau will remove the negative from your credit report, uh -huh. but then the collection agency will go ahead and resell it to another collection yeah, company. They're sneaky. That's so and guess what? Three well, months. Well, it makes sense. They want to get their money. Yeah. That's it. Three, yeah. Months, yeah. Right? three months later, guess what? Yeah. You get to see a brand new collection, ABC Collection Company, collecting on what it used to be $1,000 uh -huh. turned down into $5,000 because yeah. they add more fees to it. Yeah. So that's why it's very important to do the process from A to Z. We need to reach out to everybody. Why? Because we're going to put everybody on notice. Look, there's a new sheriff in town. You got to show us paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> With a lawyer letterhead, so it's super scary. Uh -huh. They're like, uh oh, this is serious. Um, so you talked about you get 75, 80% of stuff removed. What about like an average increase in credit score? What do you typically see? Uh, averaging um, between 90 to 150 points. That's a lot. In fact, uh, we hit a record 223 points within 60 days. Wow. Wow. So that was my, that was our next question is, you know, what is the average time frame that it takes? Because normally it's not going to take only 60 days, oh, well, right? Um, average, an average. You'll get to see a result as little as 30 days. Okay, wow. Right. But for the most part, you have a, a complete general understanding to whether or not we need to take this to a next level lawsuit and so forth, three to six months. Yeah. Okay. Because we need to reach out. Remember, we need to reach out to everybody up here, not just the credit bureaus. Uh, there's another company out there. They collect uh, uh, public records. Uh, and I'm sure you guys heard of it. LexisNexis uh -huh. is this company yes. out there. They collect mm -hmm. public records and they mm -hmm. resell them to the credit bureaus. Yeah. And guess what? We have to reach out to them as well. Yes. Because they have those records. If we just leave them alone, chances are, yeah, we might remove the judgment from your credit report. But then they can resell it again and boom. Six months later, it comes right back. Comes right back. So we want to make sure that everything is done precisely, mm -hmm. so there's no issues in the long term. Yeah, love that. What a great service. And if you're listening to our show uh, today, and again, if you want to increase your credit score, if you have credit challenges, and you know, credit is it, it affects everything. It, fle it affects you getting a job. It affects anything that you're borrowing money from. It has emotional stress attached to it, which is, which affects your life. Um, you know, maybe the, the parent that you can be to your kids because of that stress that's involved. And so that's really what the show is about today is really to be a resource and to connect you with an expert that can help release that stress and get that credit score up. So call the show 1-855-411-50. Again, that's 1-855-411-50 or online at themoneyhour.com. And we will get you connected with our credit expert, Joseph. Coming up next on The Money Hour, continued conversation about credit repair. Joseph Kidworth with Kayla Kidworth Group Associates right here at 1150 AM KKNW after this short break. Are you looking for a real estate agent who will take the time to listen to your needs and will be your greatest advocate when it comes to buying or selling your home? Deanna Barley with Keller Williams Realty goes above and beyond and is an agent you can trust. Deanna uses her expertise to represent her clients effectively and enjoys helping them achieve their real estate goals. Hi, this is Deanna Barley, and I'd like to be your biggest advocate for all your real estate needs. Give me a call at 253-468-5062. That's 253-468-5062. Have you been stuck in the same rut for so long that you can't even remember what passion or enthusiasm feels like? Or do you feel you're doing amazing, but know there must be more? Dr. Morgan Oaks knows that his passion is helping people rediscover their passion and to powerfully step back into courageous, inspired living. As a certified high-performance coach and transformational speaker, Dr. Morgan blends ancient wisdom with current research and resources in a way that inspires you to get clear about what you love and empowers you to start living your top life today. Dr. Morgan has been empowering audiences and individuals for over a decade and is excited to share his integration of some of the world's most powerful tools for healing and personal transformation with you. Hi, this is Dr. Morgan Oaks. To learn more about high-performance coaching or to hire me as your next transformational speaker, please visit drmorganoaks.com or call me directly at 206-430-3245. Again, you can learn more at drmorganoaks.com or call me directly at 206-430-3245. 
And when you go there, I'd love for you to receive the six keys to living your top life. Again, please go to drmorganoaks.com. I'd love to share this gift with you, and you can access it for free today at drmorganoaks.com. You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, and co-host, Keelan Harvey, on Alternative Talk AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage experts, Tina Mitchell and Keelan Harvey. Welcome back to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell. And co-host, Keelan Harvey. You're a local mortgage expert right here at 1150 AM, KKNW, the Saturday, September 22nd show. We bring in each week the best of the best experts in our local market on everything regarding your money. We're here to help you in today's economy. If you're hearing our show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast, but we're here to answer any questions or connect you with the guests that we have on the show today. Please call the show at 1-855-411-50. Again, that's 1-855-411-50. 1150 or online at com. In studio right now, has been here for the entire show. We have Joseph Kidworth with Kayla Kidworth Group and Associates talking about credit repair. And, I, you know, I have to do disclose. I did disclose that my head was itching, but it's because of, I think it's my sunburn on the top of my head. Oh, you poor thing. <laughs> I'm having some the, issues over here. You poor thing. We're in Key West for like a week. Oh, I feel so bad I think bad it was the you. moped driving without, uh, <laughs> on the back of my husband's moped with no helmet. So rough. Life's yeah. So rough. Anyway, a little behind the scenes. Bougie problems, but, <laughs> yeah. I, but I love it. <laughs> so, Joseph, um, I want to address something. So me and Tina, all the time, mortgage business, people come to us and they tell us their credit scores. It happens all the time from insert free credit report uh, source here. You know, oh, my right. credit score is this. My credit score is that. I just right. bought a car. My credit score is this. And every time. It's and they not- say it from the particular bureau. And they do. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And every time it's wrong. Uh, when we actually obtain a credit report. Mm-hmm. So can you explain why that is? Sure. Um Number one, if a mortgage broker like you guys pull a credit report, um, uh, there are two different two types of credit reports: consumer credit report, and obviously that, that's the consumer where the where the person gets to request it themselves. And then we have a report for credit buying and so forth. Mm-hmm. In this case, is the mortgage part of it. The differences between one and another is when you guys pull a credit report on someone, uh, you are asking the credit bureaus for more personal information. So mm-hmm. the more information you ask in regards of a consumer, the more points will be deducted from the credit report. Mm-hmm. So I know that. interesting. <laughs> so are there still fifty three different algorithms? Yeah. Out there? Yeah. And so is it true that when we pull a credit report for a mortgage, mm-hmm. the algorithm that's used for that, which is based on statistics of default on a mortgage, is going to be different than when you go get a car loan because the statistics of default on a car loan are going to be less in a different dynamic. Is that correct? Yeah, and then and, and then to um uh, to translate that into a uh, layman terms, it just technically um, more information requested by the company who is trying to provide a service to a consumer. Got it. So, if, for instance, a mortgage, you guys ask for social security number, date of birth, mm-hmm. uh, last five years of addresses, right? Mm-hmm. Even job, the last, yeah. you know, last job in the past two years. Um, what else? A full name, if there's any aliases or and whatnot. So all this information going into the matrix. And that's exactly what is going to calculate your credit and begin to deduct points. On a yeah. car dealership, it's kind of like a soft pull, and they, they don't need certain things that the mortgage brokers do need. Mm-hmm. Uh, for instance, like in public records, they don't pay attention to public records, but mortgage brokers do because mm-hmm. you want to find out whether or not the person filed bankruptcy. So, so for all, a car loan, they don't care about public records. For the most part, they not really. Yeah. I mean, Interesting. Uh, um, no, not at all. If it's a bankruptcy, they'll give you a car. I mean, mm-hmm. you filed uh-huh. bankruptcy a year and a half ago, sure, you're approved. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? Higher interest rate, though, you uh, know. Well, yeah. you'd be quite surprised because when somebody files bankruptcy and uh-huh. they completely remove their debt from the bankruptcy, the scores yeah. go up because well, there's no debt. Yeah, so let, and, and let's talk about that for a second because that re- was really interesting um, when I was learning things about credit repair that um, the, the lates really come from not the actual bankruptcy itself, but it comes from all of the delinquents that are getting charged on 
the revolving debt or whatever uh-huh. was included in the bankruptcy, right? Right. And so when you're what you're really targeting is you're targeting all the things around the bankruptcy more than the actual bankruptcy itself. Correct. Because there, there are many violations when a credit report, uh, credit agency reported at a bankruptcy, they mm-hmm. just keep breaking the lot in so many different violations. So we look into all those little tiny things just to make the proper adjustments. Yeah. Maybe quite surprised the amount of points that people gain once yeah. those things get removed. I bet. Yeah. So I heard through the grapevine that if you have a collection um, and you pay it off, you, a lot of people are under this impression that when, as soon as you pay off a collection, it's off your credit, you're good to go, and it, and it helped your credit, your score is going to go up. What's the truth about that? False. Uh, let me tell you. <laughs> no, no, here's, no, collections are getting so tricky these uh-huh. days, and they actually send you a love letter saying, look, Tina Mitchell, we care so much for your credit. <laughs> and we know that you owe this debt, and we're willing to work with you. Just pay us <laughs> just this little settlement, and we will make it go away. Uh-huh. Trust us. We're looking for your best interest. When in reality, say, look, if you don't pay it right now, we're going to sue you. Yes. But then they, that's interpretation. Yeah. So a little people just go out there and say, wow, that's awesome. They really care about me. Uh-huh. They don't care about you. Yeah, so do. the problem is when you go ahead and make that payment, you are validating the account now. 100% you're staying I'm guilty as charged. Mm-hmm. So if when, for the most part, when these companies do send all these letters to the consumer, it's because they don't have any records. So yeah. they're just trying to just trick you a little bit. That's why we come. You, you come to us. We'll do an audit against the collection company, and we will find out whether or not these companies have validation on this debt. Yeah. And the damage is already done. As soon as they send you to collections, you're dinged and it's there. Correct. Mm-hmm. It is already there. So now if you end up, end up paying this account, yeah. then what will happen is it will re-report again as yeah. a derogatory account paid in full. And that's another 30, 40, 50, even 100 points of your credit report. Yeah. And share the importance, too, because uh, I always tell clients, if it's, you know, um, for mortgage purposes, Purposes. If they have the credit score that they need and they're not going through this process, it can be a longer process. And you really can't be in this process when you're trying to go through a mortgage. You've, you know, you can't have disputes out there and be closing on a mortgage mortgage at the same t- same time. So that's really a good call to action. Get this taken care of now. But if I've got a client, the credit score is fine. They really don't, you know, they could use an improvement. If it's not that big of a deal, we don't want to go through the credit repair process because they don't want to wait that time to buy a house. Um, but always instructing them not to pay off their collections. If it does have to be paid off, I'm going to have them pay it off at closing because we're going to get a soft pull. So can you talk about that in where that comes from? Uh, as far as paying at closing? Uh, Versus because once they pay off that collection, isn't it true that now they've lost the history to that account that was tied to that collection and being that they've lost that history, what is the uh, what is the ratio on average credit limit represents 15% of the pie chart in the credit score, correct? Right. So that could have a huge impact on their credit score if they had a bunch of collections and they just paid them all off. Is that correct? Uh, yes, a huge impact on the credit report. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, now that's we, why I say pay at closing because then there's not, you know, the, the there's not going to be a new credit report pulled. There'll be a soft pull done, then, right? and it, we're done. Yeah, it's uh, right. Done. But here's is the problem though. Okay. Um, if they do pay at closing some of those collection accounts, uh-huh. and then they're planning to do something else with their credit within a couple of months down the road. Ouch. Oh yeah, they're in, it's, it, that's correct. Thank you for clarifying that, Joseph. Yes, they're screwed then. Yeah, from, yes. That would be like you just technically just shut yourself down. Yes. You bought a house, which yeah. is great, but you're not going to have good credit for the next year or two. Yes. You have to start from ground zero again. Yeah, that's technically remember that's validating these accounts. Yes, you are not guilty of charge until you're proven guilty yeah. in a court of law. Like the speeding ticket. Exactly. That's why seventy or eighty percent of speed. Well, I think it was seventy percent last time I saw statistics. Are, they get waived. They get, they get waived. Yeah. But only if you have an attorney that represents you because an average consumer like me has no idea what all of those regulations and you know things are when they gave me the ticket because guaranteed I was speeding. Yeah. I just don't want to have to pay the ticket. And I can hire an attorney and right. 70% chance so, it's going to get wiped. And if we can address those collection prior to closing, uh, uh, what we usually yes. do on situations of this, uh, this regard, we take uh, the collection, we do the audit, and if we see a, a dispute verbiage on the credit report, we immediately address that with the credit bureaus. Got it. 30 or 45 days prior to closing, mm-hmm. uh, um, we'll go ahead and make sure that all those little uh, dispute verbiage are gone from the credit report. Joseph, I'm curious. I um, I had a customer, and I've seen quite a few. I'm sure you have, Tina. Uh, the professional students acquire a bunch of debt. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, you have multiple accounts. It's easy to do. You know, um, does it make sense to consolidate that debt? 
Um, well, are we talking about student loans? Let's talk about both. Why both? not? Yeah. Uh, consolidating is not actually a bad thing. Yeah, uh, it, it is. It actually is actually a good thing, especially if you're getting a lower rate. Obviously, it's going to save you some money. Mm -hmm. um, but then, the less accounts you do have on your credit report, the better it is. Sometimes I've seen folks. In fact, this is a true story. I have a client from California, half a million dollars worth of student loans on an art degree from Stanford University. Wow! <laughs> wow. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. So she defaulted on all those payments, and she had like about. 50 of those. Oh, my. So if you consolidate those into just 50 goes one, to one, then you would not get uh -huh. that many hits. Uh -huh. Yeah. So her dad called me and said, listen, can you please help my daughter? They're from overseas. Help my daughter because she got this degree. It's a worthless degree. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> that was pretty good. And I said, okay, I'll make sure I will help you, sir. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so awesome. Got, yeah, consolidating always is a good thing because it's going to help you to compile all this information into one single thing you can yeah. manage even better and then in the event that something happened it's gonna get one hit and multiple yeah. hits well what about the other side let's talk about somebody that has great credit and they have a bunch of revolving debt and they can consolidate all of that into one card and then these accounts would get closed out that would be bad because they don't really want to make sure that they're not going to close out all of those empty cards because that can be devastating which you can't quickly right. repair that yeah, of course um and I tell people, look, if you have a few credit cards, uh, seven or ten of them, and you know, and they're like over five years old, uh -huh. yeah, you can consolidate all of them into one. And, and what I tell people is, look, um, look for promotions because these companies they have zero APR for twelve months. Mm -hmm. Do balance transfer. But leave that other one open. And leave them open. Yes. Because if you do close, you're going to damage your credit. Yeah. It's, so if the it's reason like why two is months you're losing or three that months credit old history. credit card, uh -huh. or even six months. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and close them out. That's not going to cause that much difference. But if it's over a year or two years, try to keep it open. Yeah. yeah. Makes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Joseph, what about like in, incorrect uh, personal information on your credit reports, like ina inaccurate spellings and all that fun stuff? How does that oh. affect your credit? Ooh, that's huge. Really? Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. I had this client a long time ago when I was I doing insurance. That. I had this client, William B. Nutzler. And have another William Nutzler. So when we pull uh, reports on this guy to provide the services to him, I shows in the report that he had a child support over seventy five thousand dollars. Wow. Yes. So um, he told me I don't have any kids. I said, well, but it showed that you do have a seventy five thousand dollars judgment against the, uh, the Department of Social and Services from Arizona for for a child. He said, no, I don't have any kids. So then he ended up providing mm -hmm. me, you know, all this information. And long story short, it happened to be a different William. Identical names, middle initial, different. So names could be a main factor, especially yeah. for foreigners. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you're talking about Chinese, Koreans, Filipinos, Russians, and so forth. All these names... You know, the letters and so forth, they yes. spell a little bit different, and that could be a huge factor. That's why you guys, in some cases, you might not see someone's credit report at all. Yes. Yeah. Right? You might see two yeah. credit scores, not three. Well, what's going on here is because the credit bureaus somehow lost their identity somewhere in the system, yeah. and we need to what locate a mess. it. What do you do for, like, identity theft? Speaking of, like, what's the, I'm mean, sure you see that a lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, it's very straightforward. Identity theft is just, uh, um, I think it's the number second crime in the United States. Yeah. Wow. And uh, for the first offense, they charge $250 fine, whoever just used your identity. And then $250? $250 bucks fine. Oh, my yeah. God. That's it? Yeah, that's, for the first offense. Terrible. The second offense, I think, is like $700, and the third offense no. is like terrible. Right. three days in jail. So. There's not a three strike out rule, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> thing, right? wow. That's a lot of damage. For, yeah, wow. but for, for identity theft, there's a whole different procedure that we follow. Uh, and uh, uh, and for the most part, we were very successful with, with those cases. Yeah, and so that's a good call to action as well because the last thing that you want in an identity theft is, uh, a situation, you have to be really overwhelmed and stressed about that and how violating that that would be. Get that off your plate and hire an expert that can just take care of that while you can live your life knowing somebody that's getting it you know, fixed for you. So right. um, I love that. Joseph, let's talk about um, a spouse that's been divorced and had joint accounts and the accounts are still on credit. And after the divorce, the, the spouse has been late. Um, you know that. How do you deal with something like that? Well, let's start with if you guys are married, uh, I highly suggest not to have a joint credit. 
Really? Yeah. Dave, maybe, did you hear that? Maybe one. Everything we have is, is joint. And was married out there. <laughs> now I'm becoming like a marriage counselor. Now he's very yeah. responsible, and we've been married for 24 years, so we're going to be married for at least 24 more. But well, maybe 50. Maybe 50. We're, we're 100. You know what? <laughs> yeah. These days you can just put all kinds of different things in and you just like live forever. So, so um, no joint. No, yeah, wow. just maybe one, if, it, if it's just one, uh, because in the event there's But what something... do you do if you need both spouses' income for... Like you're getting a car or something. Well, that's why I, that's exactly what I was coming. I was going exactly to this point. The reason why I do not want spouses to have uh, multiple joint accounts is just in the event that somebody takes a, a financial hardship, it is it will affect one credit report, not two. Oh mm-hmm. yes, makes sense. So if the husband has to file bankruptcy, it's just the husband, not the wife, yeah. and vice versa. So it is important to maintain that balance uh, when it comes to. Uh, um, uh, spouses and uh, as far as his bankruptcies and so forth, um, if they file bankruptcy and they're no longer together, so obviously uh, it, it could probably fall on the husband or the wife, but mm-hmm. they would not affect both of them if they did it after the divorce. Yeah. Now, you're still responsible for the debt, and the only way to get rid of this debt is to refinance those yes. accounts under your name yep. only. Which mm-hmm. we do uh, do a lot of that in yeah. our in our arena, uh, Joseph. That's the the show for today, and great. and it's been really great having you here. And I'd love for you just to leave uh, quickly a call to action for anybody that's listening that wants to improve their credit score. Yes, a call to action. Look, and guys, um, uh, life is good, life is fantastic, but mm-hmm. if you do not take care of yourself, no one will. So please reach out to us. We really care about you, your finances, which is one one of the number one things in the United States. Mm-hmm. You can feel free to reach out to me at kidworkgroup.com or at A66-731-3556. Wonderful. Joseph, Perfect. again, thank you so much for uh, coming in. You can also reach Joseph uh, calling the show at one 855 or online at themoneyr.com. And this is your host, Tina Mitchell. And co-host, Keelan Harvey. You're a local mortgage expert signing off for the day. Enjoy the rest of your uh, weekend. We look forward to speaking with you next Saturday, same time, same place, right here at 1150 AM, KKNW. Tina Mitchell, MLO 145420, and Keelan Harvey, MLO 133075, are licensed loan originators with Gateway Mortgage Group, LLC, and MLS 7233. The views expressed by the speakers on the preceding program are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of Gateway Mortgage Group, LLC, nor are they necessarily endorsed by Gateway Mortgage Group, LLC.